two, sometimes a few weeks back it was at number one, is purely because they focused mainly on the customer experience. So that's how the differentiated, uh, it differentiated itself from the other companies. Okay, uh, so just uh, right now we're going to see about uh, SaaS CRM, right? So if five years back there was nothing called a cloud or a SaaS and all this. So pretty much everybody believed uh, like any other uh, application, you need to uh, have an on-premise solution to do the CRM. So things started changing when uh, Salesforce, uh, uh, Salesforce brought in the first uh, cloud uh, uh, CRM offering. And then uh, the other vendors are also got into the game and now we have a lot more uh, uh, cloud CRM applications that are in place. So before we talk about the CRM, uh, it is very important to understand what SaaS means. Okay, so what is cloud computing? So cloud computing, uh, I would say it it you can categorize into three different things. One is uh, software as a service, platform as a service, and hardware as a service. So software as a service, we have good examples coming from Oracle CRM on demand, Salesforce, and you have a lot more non-CRM application as well on the SaaS. Now we have uh, PaaS, platform as a service. So what you Google offers to you, whether it's a Google Docs, uh, Google Talk, or a lot more, like there are 50, 60 applications of Google, Google, right? So it gives you the entire platform. Then you have Amazon, right? So Amazon provides you an hardware, right? So you go and approach Amazon and say, hey, I need a, a, a cloud hardware to run my set of applications. Amazon provides it. So this is what it's uh, in a nutshell, uh, the cloud computing is it. So what, how it is different from the, the enterprise uh, application? The thing is that first it is a, a pool of externally managed IT infrastructure. So what it means is that you need not have your own infrastructure. Uh, you can uh, you can have the service of what you want in the application, but it will be hosted by the other vendor, right? The other one is that if you want to scale your infrastructure, say for example today you have a disk capacity of one terabytes and you want to make it as a two terabytes, right? It requires a lot of investment, right? You have to buy in hardware, you have to make orders in advance and all that. But uh, a cloud computing, uh, but I, the immediate scalability is there, right? And also, it is not that actually you have to pay for the entire infrastructure. You only pay for the conception. So take for example, if you have a Salesforce or a CRM on demand, right? What you're going to pay is that for one single sales rep, you'll be paying around $75 per month. So that's what you'll be paying to the Oracle or to the Salesforce. You'll not be paying for the infrastructure. On the vice versa, if you're looking at the enterprise CRM, so you have to invest on the software, which you need to license. You need to have an hardware. You need to have a uh, lot more other things like, uh, suppose if you're paying an integration, right, you need to buy a middleware and all this. So the cloud computing provides you uh, a very optimum and effective a CRM at a minimum cost and risk. So I put a small uh, comparison between an on-premise and a SaaS CRM. But before I jump into the slide, I want to tell you that the SaaS, is, SaaS CRM is not the solution to all the problems. There are organizations and uh, uh, corporates which requires uh, on-premise CRM. Say for example, if you take uh, Dell, or if you take uh, uh, the companies like General Motors and all this, they have a lot of the security constraints, which uh, still makes them to think to go for an on-premise CRM, so the data is safe within the premise actually. But there are other companies. Uh, uh, take for example, uh, uh, you have Facebook. Facebook is using the Salesforce.com, right? So it depends on the uh, the conventional approach, security, and a lot more factor. But having said. A few years back, even the SaaS CRM option was not there. Now at least we have a SaaS CRM option, and and we are seeing this growing at a very impressive rate of 45 to 50 percent year on year. Okay, uh, so how how the SaaS CRM is different from a non-premise CRM, right? So first, uh, a minimum uh, duration to implement an on-premise CRM with a sales, service, and marketing would anywhere between uh, 12 to 14 months. Right, but if you look at the SaaS uh, CRM, right, a minimum time would be almost like a three months or a four months period. You can go on a SaaS. 
then if you look at the risk right uh, so it has been we have a statistics to say that 50 percent of the CRM implementations majority of them are failure failure not because of the technology it was a failure because they were not able to bring in all the parts together like for example having adequate infrastructure on time having a, a people to adopt the technology having the right investment on time so the risk is more on the on-premise CRM uh, whereas if you see on the uh, SAS CRM 80% of the implementations are successful as per the records and the break even is also you see it's only six months for SAS CRM uh, projects against if you take an on-premise CRM which would take somewhere between 27 to 28 months to get a break even and you also see the value to the customer because the moment they embark on a CRM implementation right uh, and they were able to successfully complete within the six months and they are getting a return on investment customer perceives that as a value okay so this uh, this is a small statistics I want to put in place but as I mentioned to you it's not that every other corporate uh, can go for a SAS we will see that in the next few slides how the SAS uh, how you have to adapt a SAS and what all the offerings that uh, SAS can provide you Okay, uh, so once again on the total cost of ownership, uh, just to say what is the corporates and companies has to spend on uh, implementing a SAS CRM or against an on-premise. So you will be surprised to see the, the cost for an SAS CRM, it is uh, uh, software licenses and application implementation and deployment cost. This were basically the, so you would say a 30% in a normal CRM if you take 100%, 30%, within 30% of it you can implement a SAS CRM. But if you look at an on-premise implementation, right, so you have a lot more cost, especially the intent cost. The intent cost like middleware, oddware, system maintenance, application maintenance, system upgrades, application upgrades. So how it is different in SAS, uh, is it, it has not been done. Yes, all these things have been done, but it is done as by the hosting provider. Say for example, Salesforce will do it for you, Oracle will do it for you, but you need not invest on this. Uh, whatever that you're going to pay as a subscription fee for a sales rep or a marketing rep, all these uh, things will be taken care of within the subscription fee. But against uh, an on-premise, everything it becomes a cost and every corporate has to invest on this. right? So that's you see, uh, you would see that uh, there will be a 70% addition to the on-premise and most of, most of this are retained cost. Okay, so we, we said about uh, how do I go for a SaaS actually, right? So in SaaS, I would call it actually there are four different levels of maturity or you start at one SaaS model and go on to become the fourth one, right? So you would see that majority of the SaaS uh, CRM implementation, it was somewhere between one and two. Very few uh, SaaS CRM implementations have reached a level of third and fourth. So what I say by the first thing is that you have a basic competence that is you take an out of the box functionality of a SaaS CRM or a cloud CRM and just adopt it without a major customization, right? So this was actually started somewhere in 2005 and 2006. So when Salesforce came out with their uh, the basic uh, cloud CRM, so people just adopted it. So this is well suited for companies which is not uh, looking for a beginner in the CRM. So they don't have a major uh, processes, a big team and all this, right? So these are the candidates who go for basic SaaS CRM implementation. When you look at the second level, right, a, a little more customization and integration to the application and uh, they have a very focus, that is the process are matured and you have a good number of customers uh, whom you are going to deal with your CRM system. And third level is that uh, where your SaaS CRM should be able to integrate with other applications in the organization, be it a ERP application, a Microsoft uh, Outlook application, SharePoint and all that. And fourth comes is the collaborative, that is it should have an arm or a wing to connect to a social network, it should be able to bring you analytics and uh, with SaaS, right, it, it will become a touch point for each and every application within your organization. So. Uh, the SaaS CRM success really depends on 
how far these corporates which have implemented or staying in the first and second zone move forward to the fourth zone, right? So if SaaS CRM offerings are not going to be robust or could not match to provide these functionalities, then eventually it will fail to stand a chance against the enterprise CRM that is on-premise CRM because in on-premise CRM even though the cost uh, of implementing an on-premise uh, CRM uh, is more, it gives you a lot of flexibility to integrate uh, this application with n number of uh, enterprise and uh, Microsoft talk, I mean Microsoft uh, uh, Office products or Outlook actually but in SaaS you have to uh, look for a, a separate apps to integrate with the SaaS CRM application, right? So, like a, a Salesforce and Oracle CRM on demand, they were able to provide it. But there are other SaaS uh, CRM offerings. They are not that robust in providing the integration to the other ERP applications. Okay, uh, so what I would get from SaaS, right? So if I'm my company or if I have to get into a SaaS CRM. Uh, um, if I'm going to be a SaaS CRM professional or a company who is going to uh, give this as an offering. So what are the possibilities uh, you can explore? So one is the implementation, right? As I mentioned to you, implementation timelines are somewhere between uh, three to four months. Then if uh, somebody is at a very basic uh, SaaS CRM implementation, they're looking to go for the next level that comes as an upgrade. And uh, one more interesting fact is that a person with a company who run on an on-premise or an enterprise CRM, they want to move to a SaaS CRM. And you also have an interesting combination of uh, enterprise CRM as well as the SaaS CRM, which we call it as an hybrid implementation. Then you have a sustenance service, which is a very small portion uh, in a SaaS CRM. The consulting. So, so if you take uh, a companies like Itachi Consulting, Deloitte, and uh, Accenture, and Capture Plans, uh, the, the most important part of our consulting exercise is not just an implementation or upgrade. What we really focus on is that how, uh, how we have to define a roadmap for an organization, right? Be it a SaaS or on-premise. So we will spend a lot of time with the corporate uh, IT teams and uh, business users in helping them to define a roadmap, right? So you are, you are going to have a SaaS CRM in place. What are you going to do in the three years, right? So this is all your return on investment. How, what else you need to do? So that's where the majority of the consulting firms uh, focus on this offering. Then you have trainings, right? So training is also, well, uh, if you look at any SaaS CRM application, right, it has a link within the application where you can go through and see a guided application in the application to go and understand each of the functionality. Then application, uh, enterprise application integration, uh, uh, if it takes Salesforce, they call it as a mashup, right? So they write some programs, and with these programs, you'll be able to integrate with n number of applications. So that's also an opportunity for you to explore. And enterprise social CRM uh, network, actually, right? So most of this uh, uh, cloud CRM offerings, right, they also brand themselves as a social CRM offerings to say that they have a connector or an adapter to integrate with uh, a Twitter or a Facebook or with uh, uh, the other uh, uh, social network sites we have, right? So that's also a one option we can explore it. Uh, 